Apple is constantly changing their Mac laptops, so in order for you to make the best purchase, you need to know all the main differences and the pros and cons of each. In this Mac Buyer's Guide video, I'll go over each model, the MacBook Air, the 13-inch MacBook Pro, and the 16-inch MacBook Pro, and I'll break them down into simple explanations so you can find out which one is best for you to buy in 2020. And at the end of the video, I'll give you some tips that could save you some money along the way. Now, the good news is, even though they're a bit expensive, Apple laptops are very high quality, and all models come standard with the following features at least 128 gigabytes of solid state drive, at least eight gigabytes of RAM, at least two Thunderbolt 3 USB-C ports, Retina display with True Tone technology, Touch ID fingerprint sensor, a 720p HD webcam, and of course the Mac OS operating system. Now all those features make up a good foundation for having a fast, reliable laptop, which is what we all want, right? Now let's begin with the MacBook Air, which was released in mid-2019. If you meet any or all of the following conditions, the MacBook Air will be best for you. If you want the absolute cheapest Apple laptop, you gotta go with the Air, which starts out at just under $1,100. If you want a gold MacBook, yes, this is the only Mac laptop that comes in the gold color option. It also comes in silver and space gray, which are the colors that the MacBook Pros are limited to. If you want the longest battery life of any Apple laptop, the MacBook Air battery life is up to 12 hours on a single charge. If you don't want or care about having the touch bar, the Air is the only Mac laptop that does not come with the touch bar, which in my opinion is overrated anyway. I have it on my MacBook Pro and it's nothing special. However, the MacBook Air does come with Touch ID, which is certainly useful. If you're not planning to frequently use processor intensive applications and you mainly only use standard applications that don't need a lot of power, such as web apps and word processing and things like that, the MacBook Air only comes with a dual core processor. So for example, it won't be able to handle 4K video editing as smoothly as a MacBook Pro. If you don't care about having the best screen, even though the MacBook Air display is the same size and pixel density as the 13 inch MacBook Pro, it does not get as bright and it only has full standard color range compared to the wide color range in the MacBook Pro. Not a huge deal, but for some it could be a deciding factor. Now finally, if you want the smallest and lightest MacBook, like the name suggests, the MacBook Air is the only Apple laptop that weighs less than three pounds, so it's perfect for people who want a small lightweight laptop that is portable and easy to take on the go. Moving on to the 13 inch MacBook Pro, which was released in mid 2019 as well. If you meet any or all of the following conditions, the 13 inch MacBook Pro will be best for you. If you're still on a budget, but need something more powerful than the Air, the 13 inch MacBook Pro starts out only $200 more than the Air. And for that extra $200, you'll get some better features like a quad core processor, a brighter, more colorful display with better graphics performance and the touch bar. If you're on the go a lot and you need a small laptop, but you need better performance than what the Air offers, the 13 inch MacBook Pro is actually slightly thinner than the MacBook Air is at its thickest. The 13 inch MacBook Pro is best described as the perfect balance of performance and portability. If battery life is not a priority, the 13 inch MacBook Pro has the shortest estimated battery life on a single charge at 10 hours, which isn't that much behind the 11 and 12 hours on the other MacBooks, but still something to keep in mind. And finally, if you plan to use more processor heavy applications, but don't want to spend more than $2,000, the 13 inch MacBook Pro can definitely handle some of the more CPU intensive applications compared to what the Air can handle, but also at a more affordable price than the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Speaking of, let's talk about the 16 inch MacBook Pro, which is Apple's newest and most exciting laptop so far. But first I want to quickly let you know about today's sponsor, Audible, which is my favorite place to get all of my audiobooks. If you're a fan of Apple products, you may know of their 1984 commercial, which alluded to the novel by George Orwell. That's what I'm currently listening to on Audible. And as an Audible member each month, you'll get one credit towards any audiobook of your choice, plus two Audible originals, which are exclusive audio titles only for Audible members. To kick off the new year, Audible is having a challenge to current and new members Members. If you finish three audiobooks by March 3rd, you'll get $20 in Amazon credit. So my new year's resolution is to hit that goal. And if you want to join in, you can get your first audiobook for free plus two Audible originals when you try Audible for 30 days at audible.com slash Andy Sly or text Andy Sly to 500 500. Again, that's audible.com slash Andy Sly or text Andy Sly to 500 500 to get your free audiobook and Audible originals when you try it for 30 days. So the 16 inch MacBook Pro was just released in late 2019 and if you meet any or all of the following conditions, it will be best for you. If you want the most powerful and higher performance MacBook of all time, yes, this is built to be an extremely fast workhorse and it can be used to replace your desktop computer if you have one. You can configure it to up to an eight core i9 processor, up to 64 gigabytes of RAM and up to eight terabytes of solid state drive storage, which is insane. It's one of the most powerful laptops available right now. 
if you want the best keyboard out of all the Apple laptops. The 16 inch MacBook Pro includes Apple's Magic Keyboard, which has more travel and is easier to type on compared to the butterfly keyboards in the other MacBooks. If you're okay with having a huge laptop, the 16 inch MacBook Pro is not small by any means. It weighs over four pounds and has the largest retina display ever in a MacBook. But on the bright side, it also has the thinnest bezels out of all the current MacBooks. If you're creating or consuming large amounts of media, this laptop is a beast for photos, video, and audio. It has six high fidelity speakers with force canceling woofers and wide stereo sound. It has a new studio quality three microphone array. It has the most pixels out of all the current MacBooks and the new AMD Radeon Pro delivers the most graphics horsepower ever in a MacBook Pro. And finally, if you have the largest budget, no surprise here, the 16 inch MacBook Pro starts at $2,400 and can be configured to over $6,000 if you max out all the specs. So it's not for the faint of heart. But speaking of budget, if the prices of Apple laptops scare you, here are some tips to save money along the way. Don't pay extra for the largest SSD storage when configuring your laptop. Most people can likely get by with a max of 256 gigabytes. To get by with smaller storage, you can do things like utilize free cloud storage like Dropbox or Google Drive. And later on, if you do need some extra local storage, you can always get a USB-C SSD. These are very small and lightweight and are constantly dropping in price. I use this SanDisk 500 gigabyte one and it's extremely fast. I can edit 4K videos directly off of it on my 13 inch MacBook Pro. Buy from other places besides apple.com. One of my favorite places for new MacBooks is MacMall, and they usually sell the latest MacBooks at a little bit of a discount. For example, here's the new 16 inch MacBook Pro at $150 off, so that's a good place to look when you're about to buy. And finally, you can choose to buy from Apple's certified refurbished inventory. You won't get the latest brand new MacBook, but here you can find some great deals for some fairly new laptops that have been returned by customers. Apple certifies them, and they basically come in like new condition and even come with a one year warranty from Apple. So I hope that helps you find the best MacBook for you in 2020. If you have any questions, please comment down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this in the future. I do one of these every single year. Thank you for watching. My name is Andy and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.